Okay. Left on their own, most companies, especially big companies, look only at the purchase price. Mm -hmm. Either the wage rate for where to put the factory or the purchase price uh, to, in terms of buying it. So just an in interesting story. Jack Welch one time said he'd like to put his factories on a big barge and move it to a country. Let's think China. OK. And then when the when the local wages went up so high that it wasn't economic anymore, he'd take the barge, he'd move it over to Indonesia, you know, and then to India and then to Africa and, and move the factory to where the least expensive people were. So so, so wages tend to drive drive the question The companies talk about purchase price uh, variance, P, P, PV, and the procurement person's job is to reduce the purchase price of the basket of goods that he or she purchases. So the majority of companies do that, uh, but increasingly uh, we are uh, convincing them that they should instead look at a, at a variety of other uh, factors. So uh, uh, we, we talk about uh, total cost of ownership. So total cost starts with that purchase price, the U.S. and China typically say the, the U.S. is going to be higher, maybe 30, 40 percent higher. Uh, but then the system, the, the user answers a series of questions and it, and it adds in the duty and the freight and the carrying cost of inventory and the, uh, the uh, possibility of emergency air freight and the risk of stocking out and uh, all this stuff. And, and eventually it turns out that when they do that, they find that about 20 or 30 percent of what they're now importing, they'll be more profitable sor sourcing or producing here. So. Uh, and then any, anything that can be done in terms of automation, in terms of, uh, you know, reducing the cost to make the product, redesigning it, mm -hmm. you know, applying, like when we were talking before, I think you were talking about uh, uh, theory of constraints, you know, applying methodologies like, like theory of constraints and the, and the somewhat similar uh, quick response manufacturing that comes out of uh, University of Wisconsin-Madison, very similar concepts for, for uh, reducing, reducing especially reducing delivery times, because there's, there's a lot of, it looks pretty clear that if you can offer companies a, a dramatically shorter delivery, that they're willing, first of all, they'll buy from you, that's good, assuming you've got quality and so on, mm -hmm. and, and they're willing to pay moderately more, and especially now when, when, they're wait, when they're, the stuff they've ordered from China six months ago is stuck in a boat somewhere yes. along the Pacific and, and, and there's a darn, you know, and, and, and you're available and, and you're 50 miles away and you can make the stuff for them and get it to them in a week, mm -hmm. you know, that, then that's great. But, you know, one of the problems has been that in the past when delivery wasn't screwed up, I talked to some companies and they'd say, I can get it faster from China, even by boat than I can get it from a U.S. factory because U.S. factories have long lead times and they don't jump on it. And the Chinese work 24 hours a day to get the stuff out kind of thing. Okay? So, so it's up to the U.S. company to use methods like QRM, like theory of constraints, and cut the time from the order receipt to the shipment so that they can pick up that month, two months, three months difference in shipping time and that's that's their delivery advantage. And then they can either get a bigger share of the market or demand a higher price. And, and many companies will pay for them because you're all familiar with uh, just in time inventories. Mm, absolutely. Okay. So big trend, save, companies have cut, cut their balance sheets dramatically, saved them a lot of money. But over the last year or two, everybody's saying, maybe you got too lean. Maybe maybe you shouldn't go with just in time inventory. And so I was on a an annual meeting of AMA, Association for Manufacturing, Manufacturing Excellence, ex, excellent group, lean group. And, and they discussed that. And everybody else said, yeah, we're too lean. You're, you've got to go a little bigger on the image. I said, no, we're not lean enough. Because if all those companies were lean, mm -hmm. they would understand that they should not be having an extended supply chain being dependent on stuff that has to be put in a boat and shipped, you know, yes. 5,000 miles and and it uh, takes two months to get there, that that's entirely inconsistent with lean, inconsistent with Toyota production system, all these beliefs uh, that, that have come down. And, and if they were, if they become more, they can become more lean and find local suppliers and reduce their inventory, be more just in time than they have been in the past. So we think the, the, uh, the, the opportunities for reshoring are, are great. 